Hello everyone, so there's been some huge breaking news. About two days ago, some articles started coming out stating that Pilgrims, which is one of the UK's biggest pork producers, and also the company that I recently exposed in my gas chamber investigation, have announced that they're shutting down their Ashton Underline site, the same site that me and my team investigated and exposed about two weeks ago. It's now national news. What they're saying was the reason is obviously not the investigation. They're not going to say that, are they? But I just want to give you a little bit of a timeline and get you to make your own mind up. So their announcement comes two weeks after our gas chamber investigation reached 2 million views across social media in its first week of release. So that's 2 million views, thousands of comments. And following the release of the gas investigation, the, the Guardian also did an exclusive article, a really detailed article. The article reached number one in environment and also made their top 10 most viewed in the world across the Guardian. So that's uh, some pretty bad PR. Now, about four days or so before the article was released, Pilgrims actually found out about this footage because they need to get a right to reply from Pilgrims. Start to show the Pilgrims staff this footage and give them access. They also gave access to a crisis management kind of PR person. So this wasn't a small deal for Pilgrims. You could imagine that they were kind of a bit concerned. This is a very, very bad publicity for their company. Now, in response to the Guardian article, the Pilgrims uh, representative said, there's nothing to identify that this is our site and it would be inappropriate for us to comment on that basis. And they also said that the Food Standards Agency was on site during the time that it this footage was filmed and we had no issues raised in the time frame you provided. Very interesting. So they deny, they wanted to deny that or they, they there's no evidence it's their site. So there's, this is a, a bit of denial there from them. And then two days, right? This is this is very interesting too. So just work out this timeline. Two days after the, the Guardian article was released, Mark Hayton, Pilgrims UK's pig supply chain director, was set to follow former UK Agricultural Director Barney Kay out the door in what's understood to have been a sudden development. So we've got this big guy, a big director guy at Pilgrims, leaving Pilgrims, right? In a sudden development. Now, two days after we released that investigation, maybe Mark seen the investigation thought, this is bad publicity. Who knows whether he got fired, whether they thought we're gonna fire someone here, or whether he just walked out the door after seeing the footage and this publicity is too bad. I don't actually know, but that's just an interesting Coincidence, isn't it? Then two days after that, all of us activists, we went down there for a demo, showing banners, showing signs to all the people driving past there. We had the footage playing. The guards were denying it's the footage, saying it's uh, it was Australian footage. So I think the staff at Pilgrims were like sending the message out that it's not our, it's not footage from this plant. It's not footage from Ashton. Um, basically, it's Australian footage. They're trying to claim it's from here. So they were doing all these denial tactics. And even the staff, even though it's not the staff's um, fault this, they're not the ones accountable. It's interesting that that message that it's not their site uh, went down to these staff members. And I started uploading these videos too. And I was saying, oh, something big is coming and they won't be able to deny it for, for longer. So they try to say anything and now they're just denying it's their slaughterhouse, but they won't be able to deny that for much longer. All of this pressure, and I've got a large social media following, I reach a lot of people, we've got media, they know, right? Pilgrims know that documentary is coming out because we had to send to them for the, our own uh, right to reply. It's like a legal thing you have to do for Ofcom. And they know about what I'm planning to do. And I remember saying in the video, everyone in Manchester is going to know about this place soon. Everyone in Manchester is going to know this, what's going on in here soon. <laughs> so they know, and they're under extreme amounts of pressure. The Guardian article is still up <laughs> because they have sufficient evidence that it's the Ashton site because I delivered it to them. It's up there forever. Like this footage is up there forever. It's very damning, this footage. Um, the, the footage is horrible, horrifying. Pigs screaming to death, dying in their own feces. And this is supposed to be the best of the best, this place. Now this has made national news. What's baffling to me, these newspapers aren't mentioning <laughs> the, the expose. Like Manchester News have done an article on the, on the place shutting down, but we sent them a release for the footage and they haven't reported on that. Um, and they even used a photo. They come down and took photos of us while we we're at the front of this slaughterhouse and they didn't even report on the the expose that happened there. And, then, and a lot of these uh, newspapers we sent it out to and they didn't report on it, but they're reporting on this. R really, this is a quite an important detail to miss out. And uh, you know, The Guardian which is a massive national, very cr uh, credible newspaper. And they do so much due diligence when they do these articles. It took a long time. And they're forgetting to mention 
they've just been exposed badly and there's a massive documentary coming out as well. This is a huge place. This place kills nearly a million pigs a year. It's like six, 750,000 a year. And considering only 11 million pigs uh, comparable to other countries, uh, 11 million pigs, it's, it's a lot, a big number, but uh, 11 million pigs killed each year in the UK. And this site here was responsible for 750,000 of them. Nearly 10%, it's like, well, it's like six or 7% or something. That's like, that's crazy. I don't think I'm gonna call this a coincidence, even though like, you, you know that industry will never admit that activists have, have pushed them to this, this point. I think it's the pressure. Now, the, there's been vigils running here for years. There's been different protests from different activist groups at this place for years. It's in a suburban area. There's always activism going on there. There's been multiple different, I've been going there since uh, 2017, making big videos there and, and uh, all the amazing different activists who have done different types of protests there. I think it's a PR move because with the upcoming film coming out and this video coming out, I think this was just the final straw that pushed them over the edge. Now, the UK pork industry has been failing as well and they already um, dropped down their site to four uh, days a week anyway, this site. They were already so weak. And then this come out and they just probably thought, it's not even worth keeping it open. Let's, let's shut it down now. Because it was two weeks after we released this investigation, two weeks. Now, the timing, yes, they've, they've, they've said that they, they you know, they're, they possibly want to close certain sites before that, but I think this was just the, the final straw for them, 100%. There's no other, there's no question. They're saying that the closure was part of a review, a review prompted by unfavorable market conditions. And they're, they're splitting 90 jobs from the 542 workers, which I'll get to the workers, because uh, I don't wish any bad on the workers. Some workers who are bad people who torture, uh, who are deliberately cruel, but most workers are just working there because they don't have a better option. So 90 new jobs will be split between Spalding, Westerly and Brombra. Spalding and Westerly are both gas chambers as well. So the company said the UK pork sector was facing significant challenges and that the decline of the UK sow herd by 15%, cheap imports, the loss of farms and post pandemic recovery challenges. So that's what they're saying. They're facing all those things. Rachel Baldwin of Pilgrims UK said, the decision to propose the closure of our Ashton site has not been taken lightly. So this is a huge decision from them. Huge decision. And you're saying that this investigation didn't influence it at all? Come on. We all know that they were in a crisis mode when this came out because this is damning footage. It's the first of its kind in the UK and Pilgrims is a massive company. They represent 25% of the UK pork market. They're, they're, they're massive, they're huge. And they try all this propaganda to, it's all humane, it's all, they're, they're, they're just, a, they're just a, you know, not good. This is the interesting part here. The age and location of Ashton, it's been there for years, right? And it's smack bang in a suburban area. With a densely populated area, right, means that there's no feasible opportunity to modernize or grow the site. So in one breath, they're saying the reason is an unfavorable market. There's been significant challenges in the pork industry. Loss of farm cheap inputs, all this. In the next sentence, Rachel's saying there's no feasible opportunity to modernize or grow the site. Why would you be thinking of expanding Ashton when you're going through all these challenges? Why are you going through all these challenges? The market's bad and you want to expand Ashton? No, That's a, that, that sounds like a contradiction. So the, one of the reasons is we can't grow the site because it's in a suburban area, even though it's been there for decades, right? I think it wasn't about growing Ashton. I think the market was unfavorable, yes, that it put a bit of pressure on this site already. So this site was already like a weak link. And now with this investigation and film coming out, which they're all aware of, everyone at Pilgrims, all the company, all the staff are all aware of this investigation that's come out, got 2 million views, it's an article they can't get removed. I think it's a PR move because they just think, you know, the publicity is gonna be so bad, the publicity is so bad, they're not gonna stop these activists. There's already pressure on this site. There's already other things to consider. It's gonna be a much better decision to just get rid of that site altogether. So I think that's, that's what happened. Of course, they'll never admit it, but we all know what's happening in the background. We all know what they've been trying to do. And uh, we all know that this is actually a huge deal that the first gas chamber footage in the UK has been exposed and there's further details coming out in the documentary. Now, Let's get to the workers there because 542 workers are going to lose their job and I don't want to see these workers and their families in hardship because you gotta, you got to think of it like this. I mean, as a vegan, you might think, oh, that anyone works at a slaughterhouse, they're a bad person. Circumstances force them into that kind of job because they, they can't get... Um, better employment, you know, like that might be a place that offers employment and they just go to work there because they need money and they're in hard times. So that is not their fault that the the, the, the area they're, bo they're, they're born into or they live in, 
the best kind of job available to them is one of the slaughterhouses. And many people do leave pilgrims because they can't, that, that site because they can't handle it. They are not the enemy, the workers. I mean, there's obviously some workers that are psychologically disturbed and you see the footage of, of people abusing the animals in there and stuff like that. But there's just some people that work in different areas in the slaughterhouse that aren't abusing animals. And the real enemy is the companies that make money off of, you know, the torture and suffering in these gas chambers and other industries that that murder animals. You know, they're, they're, they're capitalizing off of the demand that people have for animal products who are completely hoodwinked by the, the marketing and making a bunch of profit. So these people that are profiteering off of the animals uh, being gas chambered are much more the enemy than the people who are just walk, working within the system. To anyone who's lost their job at Ashton, this fight is not with you, and I hope that you get back on your feet. And there's there's other jobs and avenues that you can you can work in. Um, and I just want to say, like like like, join us in fighting these people. Really, join us in uh, in in trying to 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 get these uh, these money driven animal abusers uh, just abolished. In their most recent financial report, listen to this. Pilgrims recorded an operating loss of 16 million pounds in 2021. Okay, they're losing a bunch of money, right? But activism's not working. It's not the plant-based uh, uh, vegan movement that, or the animal rights movement that's doing anything. They're just losing, they lost 16 million pounds in 2021 off the back of challenges facing the pork sector, right? So the market's really bad. They're losing all this money, but they still managed to pay their directors, their directors, right? 1.73 million pounds in the same year. So the directors are loving it, like 1.73 million pounds, but their low paid workers are being made redundant. Absolute crazy injustice. It seems like the directors still made, uh, figured out a way to, to get 1.73 million pounds here. All their workers, catch you later. Now, this is a huge win, but I just wanna say all you activists out there, activism works. Exposés work. These investigations work. Pressure works. Uh, advocacy works. Vigils work. Uh, bringing eyes to these places work. It just goes to show how weak the meat industry actually is. If this is the kind of thing that can just topple them, right? Topple them over the edge, like because it's two weeks after investigation, and this was just like the final straw. They're just like, you know what? Taking all this into account, taking our financial losses into account, taking this expose into account, we have to shut down a site that kills 750,000 pigs. And they only, that this represents like 50% of the pigs they kill or something like that, don't quote me on that, but it's like a large proportion of the amount of pigs that, that pilgrims kill are on this Ashton site. We need to continue our work pressuring this area. I mean, there's a lot of activists that pressure the pork industry and it just goes to show how easy they top, topple over. I wanna give an example in Australia, uh, Chris Del Force and um, Farm Transparency exposed Australian Food Group. It was on the TV over there. And a little later, Australian Food Group shut down because they were forced to put CCTV in. And that just goes to show how weak Australian Food Group were that, that an expose made, uh, and, and the thing that toppled them over is probably like, oh, CCTV, they're gonna see how cruel the pigs are. It's not worth it for us. We're gonna lose a bunch of money keeping it open or, or they couldn't afford it. It's just these small things. These small margins can cause slaughterhouses to shut down. Um, and now, it's happened in the UK. Tip them over the edge. Tip them over the edge. And um, this really should motivate you. Um, I just wanna say that just because this one site, which has been there for years and it's huge, this is a big deal, especially in the activist community, and it's a, a huge deal just in the community in Ashton, you know, they had to smell the crap, they had to hear the screams. But this does not mean the job is done. Pilgrims still have two more slaughterhouses that are gas chambers that they're gonna move uh, people to. We still need to target the demand. We still need to do everything. Like, I mean, yes, it's a big win. It's a big, it's, it harms them probably a lot. Um, targeting supply chain is pretty important, but also we need to target the demand chain still and we still need to keep fighting. So so basically if Pilgrims did this as a, a to, to avoid the bad PR that's coming, it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. You've got two more sites. There's more gas chambers everywhere. Um, and there's more industries that you're involved with that you exploit and kill animals. And, and also this is just uh, taking into account the animal rights violations across the UK as a whole. All right, this is just one part of the battle. I just wanna also say my documentary is coming out soon. We're in the post-production stages. I'm very excited to release this. And please, please, we, we I need you to all get behind this. And you know, please join the movement and just stay tuned and keep following and supporting our work because we really got some big things coming and I'm really just itching to get this film out there and get back out there and, you know, just get back on the into the grassroots movement and, 
and get some stuff done, you know what I mean? So thank you everyone for your support. What do you think about this? Do you think they're, they're never gonna admit it, are they? they? They lie, they gaslight, they use marketing and propaganda. They're never going to admit that, that the vegan movement, that um, activism investigations had anything to do with their decision, but they are sweating. And this, is, this here just goes to show how weak the meat industry really is when you just get, you could just have one, one extra element and boom, they topple over. So let's see what we can do as, you know, the, the, this is very, um, just motivation. It, it's just very motivating, you know what I mean? It's very motivating. And um, yeah, just wait for that documentary. It's coming soon, it's gonna be massive. Biggest thing I ever worked on in my life and it's taken years and years and years to get to this point. And it uh, looks like as soon as we release that footage early, bang, they toppled over. So imagine what will happen with the film, you know? So yeah, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for your support and uh, see you all soon.